Vind ik dat het daar kan dat is het daar en dat zijn ze op plaats van een hart te stonden dus een paar flashen daar aan de kerm met de church. Maar dat is maar een beetje van een down bathroom en zo. So we have been looking, and I know that we, uh, on our notes, we've been talking about that God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. We've been looking at what is truth, um, that uh, God wants us to worship Him in truth. And uh, a lot of folks don't realize that their life of sanctification is following God in truth. And when we live a sanctified life, we are worshiping God. I said a little earlier this evening when we were opening that worship is a, is a choice. Uh, there are times in our walk with Christ where we may feel discouraged. There may be times where we even question. The enemy will do that to you. Um, there may be times that you uh, 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 are diagnosed with things. But your, your greatest choice has to be Christ above all. And when you choose Christ, you choose to worship. And uh, worship and holy are synonymous with one another. Last week I referenced that around the throne of grace, there is that, that repetition of holy, holy, holy. So in worship, there is holiness. Uh, we find that that's uh, separation, uh, sanctification. Holiness is a description of, of or holy is a description of the divine nature of God. God loves us so much that He wants us to be like Him. I talked about last week justification. Sometimes the easy way for folks to remember that is just as if I'd never sinned. But to take it to maybe a deeper, different level, but justification is this. It is the act of God by which He declares us to be just or righteous or perfect. And only God can truly declare what is just, what is righteous, and what is perfect. So when we are justified, we are justified, the Bible says, through faith in Jesus Christ. We accept the work that He's done upon the cross. We by faith believe that He can wash us by His blood. We by faith believe that we are sinners and uh, we, we need a Savior. And so by faith alone, we, uh, uh, we, we've been united with Christ who is just and perfect. So justification is being united with Christ which is just and perfect. Sin separates us from God. But faith and repentance brings us and joins us to God. Amen. Aren't you glad for justification tonight? Amen. And when we are saved, we are a worshiper. Amen. God uh, that changes us from who we are, self-living, self-righteousness, uh, self-centered, to where we have become one with Him. And the center of our life is no longer ourself and serving the flesh, but now we live unto the Spirit and we serve God and we're one with Him. Amen. We're justified. How awesome is that tonight? That God is the one who, if you would, for a technical word, who can legally, and that is by heaven's legality, say that we are just or we are perfect or we are righteous. Justification is the legal standing with God in that spiritual union with Jesus Christ that comes about by faith alone. There's nothing that we can do of works that would bring it, but it's by faith alone that joins us with Jesus Christ. It's almost like a marriage union. It legally binds us to Him. Amen. When we, by faith, accept Him as our Savior, and we continue the faith walk, and we walk in righteousness. It's justification. But God doesn't just justify us, but He desires to sanctify us. Remember how I said last week that, that, that sanctification is a, 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 uh, a, a, a uh, just a, a growing, but it is a process. 
Uh, growing is kind of like being stagnant in one place. But God is on the move and we are moving with God. And, and really, we, we look at our life and uh, we see how that each of us have matured in our life. Because why? Because time, time didn't stand still. Now, I know that some folks lack maturity because simply one thing, they don't want to grow up. They lack responsibility. Uh, God wants us to grow up. And you know what in life? you got to grow up. You do. you got to grow up. That, that big problem with our society. They don't want to grow up. It's not my message. But we find that sanctification is that of, of, of being in a process or walking with Christ. Uh, and so sanctification is going with a God who's on the move. And God sanctifies us through His Spirit and through His Word. Now, this is an interesting thought as I was studying and and, and I, 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 and I'm not going to tell you who I did read because I've read several things. But I loved how that um, one writer that I was reading talks about sanctification. Sometimes it's in little steps and sometimes it's in big steps. You can look at your life and you can see that where God, man, you just, you, God just uh, drove you to a closer to Himself, revealed His Word and gave you power through the Spirit. And there was a submission of your will as well and a hunger and a thirst and a yielding to God. And there was a huge step of, of stepping in sanctification. And then there are other times where there are little steps. It's a, a smaller step. Your gain isn't as great as it was at other times. But needless to say, God there is still working to bring us into the image of the Son, Jesus Christ. And that is sanctification. Thank God for the big step. Thank God for the little steps. Thank God for a merciful God who, who gives us behavior that is overcoming. Aren't you glad for overcoming behavior tonight? And that's what sanctification is. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse number 14. Hebrews 10, chapter number 14. And I know that I've strayed from the notes a little bit, but I really feel like this is where I want to be and God wants us to be as we look at sanctification. The Bible says, By the which will... Uh, by Jesus Christ, uh, the covenant we have with Him. Amen. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Amen. We are sanctified through Him once and for all. But it is a progressive work. But it still all comes to the cross of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that we can go back to Calvary, amen, and visit Calvary, that we can meet with Christ, amen, there on that level ground where the blood still flows and He sanctifies us, amen. Thank God for sanctification. Then in Galatians chapter number four, uh, 6, verse number 14, the Word of God says this, God forbid that I should glory or I should give any type of exaltation. I should brag. Amen. Uh, 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 Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Amen. Our boast should be in Jesus Christ. You know, when we are living a sanctified life, it will be different than the world. Our life will be different than the world. Amen? Because we are made into the image of God. And it's nothing that we can boast of, but it's through the work of the cross. Amen? And the Bible says that, that, that uh, whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. That means the world is dead to me. And as far as the world is concerned, I'm dead to it. That is sanctification. Can I ask you tonight, how is your walk of sanctification? Are you dead to the world? And is the world dead to you? Or are you still desirous to have the things of this world? And then the Word of God said this. We talked about it a, 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 a few weeks ago. That where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. It's not a matter about where our heart is. Our heart is desperately wicked. It can lead us wrong. How many people have said, Oh, but I'm trusting my heart. I'm trying, I feel my heart. Your heart can lead you wrong. 
And so you need to make up in your mind that, 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 that your treasure is in heaven and get your heart to follow your treasure. Is the most important thing to you your walk with Jesus Christ and living a sanctified life unto Him and have, living a joint life with Him? Amen. This, this salvation means that we are brought unto Jesus. There is a relationship. There is a bond, a blending. He is my God. I love Him. He gave His life for me. I give my life for Him. The blending, the bonding, the coming together, the union, the legality of being justified, amen, changes the whole course of who we are. And because we have been changed, we want to be like Him. Amen. I pray that you desire to be more like Him today. Amen. In everything about your life. Amen. That really our, our life is separated from earthly things. That our absolute moral perfection is found in the deity of who He is. Did you hear me? Your moral Perfection is found in the deity of who He is. I crucify myself. I put off the old thing. One thing I think about myself, I was just sharing this with my wife, I can be a little transparent. But I can be reactive at times. And probably by nature, I probably am a reactive type of person. I know we all are, but some people don't react the way that everyone else does. But you know, just because I may be reactive doesn't mean it's a godly trait. I need to react in godliness. All of us here. Amen. And our moral character, once again, should be found in the deity of Jesus Christ. We should be a participator in the divine nature of Christ, having fellowship with Him, knowing that because He is our mediator, God wants us to stand in a position of justification, and we do when we are saved. He says, "You are legally, uh, you are, uh, you are legally uh, justified. You're righteous." But then He calls us to the act through His Spirit and through His Word to have that relationship with His Son. Amen. That we become more like Christ. He is our mediator, so we can become like Him. Amen. That is the divine plan and the will of God. God has always had things that were separated, people that were separated unto Him. I referenced this last week. I'm going to reference it right here again. God always had people. Israel was God's people. They were sanctified unto Him. Now, they may not have always done right, but God always made a way of sanctification. Read it. Amen. From the very beginning when He brought them out of Egypt, God designed the tabernacle that was the very first way that they could be uh, justified, the way that they could be sanctified. They looked through the cross and everything about that tabernacle and everything about it was a, a shadow, a type, a picture of Jesus Christ. We understand it better because we look back at the tabernacle, but we also look at the cross. And a study of the tabernacle will help us understand even more about the cross. All of it coming together teaches us that we need to be justified. We need a Savior. We need a sacrifice. And Jesus Christ became the sacrifice. The one sacrifice, the Word of God said, I just read it to you. He doesn't need to be sacrificed again. He is God's perfect sacrifice. The Lamb of God without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. God searched and found His Son and designed for His Son to come even before the foundations of the world so that He can make a way for mankind to be justified, amen, unto Him. And He desires for us to grow in the grace and the knowledge and have a union with His Son that we become sanctified as we become more like His Son. So everything about the tabernacle, uh, we find that God had uh, set apart. He had people set apart. I told you last week, He had uh, not only a, a people set apart, but He had a day set apart. And, and so he, he wanted His people to be called a holy people. What was the Sabbath to be? It was to be a holy day. And so God always had set apart, things set apart for holy things. 
uh, holy purposes, holy devotion, holy reason, set apart for Him. This day is set apart for God. Amen. Uh, and some people in their Sabbath say, oh, I need a day of rest my day of sleep. It's a day of rest. The real rest is found in Him. God wants you to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. And so uh, we find that there were feast days and there were Levitical uh, uh, services in, in, in the tabernacle that were set apart to be holy. Well, there was not just everybody uh, out of the millions of people, and I'll tell you more about that in a few moments, out of the millions of people, only a few were set apart to go into the tabernacle, and only some could even go uh, uh, into the Holy of Holies. Not everyone could get in there. God had a holy people set apart. And trust me, those priests were looking at their lives, making sure that they were right and they were pure before God as they wore their robes with bells on it and a rope around their foot into the Holy set apart for holy things. Amen. When we come before the presence of God, nowadays people are, no, are so nonchalant they think that they can come in and haphazardly come into the presence of God, living in any way that they want with half-hearted devotion. God is looking for a holy people. There should be a desire in our heart to be holy because that's what God desires. And so there is a condition, uh, purification, cleanliness it, it, it is a condition, the holiness, and, 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 and God is a holy God, and He always has had uh, things set apart to be holy. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter number 8. I find this very interesting. Now I want you to once again in your mind bear with me tonight that the reason that we want to live holy is because it's worship to God. When God sees us living holy, and other people see us living holy, it brings worship to God. So, here is the consecration of the priest. Now, there are several things that we can look at tonight. Uh, I know that the priests, we can see that, uh, uh, you know, they, in their office, um, can represent Jesus Christ, but they're also a representation of, of the believer as well, knowing that we are a royal priesthood. And so, uh, there are some things that I want to gain and understand here. The Bible says, and, and, and Moses can be a type of Christ when we look back at the Old Testament too. The Bible says, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Take Aaron and the sons with him, and, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and a, a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of unleavened bread. So here we're looking at, there's several things. There's a sacrifice, there's a, there's a priest, there's a place of worship. We know that really the greatest place of worship is Calvary. Amen. How many times have you been there in your worship? But you've never traveled there physically speaking. Amen. But yet in our minds, I've been there countless upon countless times at the cross of Jesus Christ worshiping. Amen. But there's also that of, of knowing that we can come before the presence of God anywhere in worship, but it's necessary for us to be holy when we come to worship. And so, the sacrifice of the priest is a place of worship. Uh, the sacrifices, uh, this, the sacrifice really is the foundation of all the worship. You come into the tabernacle, and the very first instrument that you, uh, uh, furniture that you come to was was that brazen altar. It was, you know, uh, as you look at that, all the other pieces of furniture of the tabernacle could be placed inside of that. Uh, on there was was the horns going outward, a representation that sacrifices for the whole wide world. Uh, it was a bloody place. It was not a place of, uh, of great beauty, but it was a bloody place. But, but it was a place of beauty because it, it, it brought the remedy for sins. When we look at Calvary, Calvary in itself is not a beautiful place. When you think about Jesus Christ and the death that He died for you and God, how, how, how amazing is that that God would give His only begotten Son and that the Son of God would die a death for you and God, that He would take upon Himself the sins of all the world. Amen. He, 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 
that he, he would do that for you and I. He would take the punishment, the wrath of God for sin. And so here it is, this first piece of furniture represents uh, the, 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 the wrath of God that is being taken, particularly by an animal at this place in the Old Testament. But when we come into the New Testament, the supreme sacrifice being Jesus Christ. So everything about our walk with Jesus Christ, if we are going to, to really, if we're going to know the Word of God and be able to wash in the Word of God, we've got to know Jesus first. We, we, uh, you know, if, if we're just trying to live the Word of God by reading it and doing it because we see it as a set of, of, of laws and standards, and that, that's legality. You're, you're, you're trying to be saved by your own works and you're trying to do it through, through, through some type of legal system that's beyond God's way of entrance into His presence and having justification with Him and having union with Him. And so uh, Jesus Christ becomes the sacrifice. Everything about uh, uh, going on in the tabernacle, and I don't want to lose folks tonight. Uh, if you're not familiar with the tabernacle, you, when you walk in, there was the brazen altar. You would, you would find that there would be uh, as well uh, 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 the table showbread, the, 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 well, the labor next would be, would be next. Then into the holy place would be uh, the, 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 the table showbread, the candlestick, uh, the, the, the altar of incense, representing sweet prayer, aroma going up to God is one of the things. And then as you go into the holy place would be the Shekinah glory of God's presence. And before you ever got to any other piece of furniture that represents deeper truths through Jesus Christ, amen, you had to pass by the brazen altar. But bottom line tonight, we can never live a sanctified, godly life until we really come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God be saved. God be saved. God be saved. God be saved. You got to ask Him for His grace and His mercy. And come with a heart of repentance, not just regret. Lots of people live with regret. Probably everybody in here, you have something you regret. It can't be about regret alone, it has to be about repentance. We come and we repent and accept the blood of Jesus Christ and the work that He's done. It's all by faith. Nothing of works. works. Works don't do it. The only way to accept God's, God's, God's uh, legality, so to speak, in the spiritual realm of being perfect and pure and righteous is going through the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we move on to the deeper things. All those deeper things is is talking about the life of sanctification. Next is the labor. It's the water by which they washed themselves. It was such a, a polish in such a way that it was a mirror. They saw themselves. If they had blood on themselves from doing a sacrifice, they could wash themselves and cleanse themselves. The only way we're ever going to be able to apply the Word of God to our life is when we're in a union with Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God opens up the pages of the Word of God to us and empowers us to live that sanctified life. And God wants us to do it through the power of the Spirit. You can and you will and you must. Amen. If you're saved, live a sanctified life. Let me just say something to you tonight to bring this down to, to, to this modern terminology. You know, there are certain things that we need tools for the trade. All of you have different trades that you do. Most of you in your trades, you have to have tools by which you can do it, whether it's educational things or whether it's things that, 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 that are physical that you have to do your job, whether you, you, you attain and acquire or whether your job parent gives to you. And there are things in our life that we have tools for. Do you know, uh, 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 oftentimes, get children in their life, they can get upset, they can get mad, they can get frustrated, and uh, you know they may they may get so mad and they scream and they yell and they kick and they can lay down the floor. Maybe they slam the door. But you know what? Hopefully, as adults, we don't model that to children. You know why? Because we've grown in, in our life. We've been given the tools that says you can be upset about something, but don't lay down on the floor and kick your hands and your feet and beat the floor and beat your head against the floor and scream and wild to everybody in the Lycans Valley hears you. 
You know why? Because you've been given the knowledge, the tools of knowing it's okay. To, but you also are given the tools of how to deal with it and understand I may not like this, but these are the resources that I can use to get to where I want to be, right? I know it's simple, but it is true. Um, uh, just It's just the way it is. And so when we are believers, we have the tools to no longer be a baby in Christ. Remember last week? Paul was calling them saints, but he said, wait a second, you're saints, but you're struggling here. You need to get sanctified. You need to get to the place where you're past the milk of the Word and you get on the meat of the Word. So we can be sanctified and still be a baby, but we can't be a baby forever. The Word of God says, get the tools and grow up and get past the milk. Get the meat of the Word of God. And so the tools are that we have found Jesus as our Savior. We find Him as the supreme sacrifice, but the tools now is get to the brazen altar and wash yourself through the Spirit of God and wash your yourself through the Word of God and get your life sanctified. Once again, it's understanding who we are in Christ. And we're following peace with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Our lives should be marked by peace. Our lives should be marked by holiness. Our lives should be marked by a life of sanctification because it shows we have a union with Christ. And because we have a union with Christ, amen, we have become more like Him. Now, it don't mean people won't talk bad about you. It don't mean people won't misjudge you. They did that to Jesus. Amen. But it means that we are in right standing with God and we are doing it God's way the right way. The church has been trying to live so close to the world, and it's getting worse. I, I'm only in, in, in my 40s, and I look and see the move of the church, and it's grievous to me. And what would someone a hundred years ago, what if they came back and seen where the church were, or was at? But it's not only my standard, it's not only these people a hundred years ago. Because really our opinions don't matter. But what does God think? The value of honoring His presence, the value of keeping the Sabbath day and keeping it holy, the value of honoring our bodies as a temple of the Holy Ghost, the value of living in the Word of God, amen, and, and, and knowing that we're dead to the flesh, but we are alive in the Spirit, and we're producing the fruit of the Spirit, and we're walking in the Spirit. Amen. All those things that God has equipped us with. Let's read on. So the Bible says in verse number 2, And you gather all the congregation together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You know there is almost 3 million people that is to be gathered here. But there's only a small fraction of those people who are allowed to Brother Craig, go into the tabernacle. They're holy people. Aren't you glad that when it comes to the cross of Jesus Christ, Brother Justin, there's not just a fraction of people, but whosoever will can enter into the cross. Whosoever will, amen, can get to the Shekinah glory of God. Amen. But once again, we have to understand that it was holy people set apart to go into the holy presence of God. God is still looking for holy people to get into His holy presence. Amen. And so uh, 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 the Bible says that Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and, and, and the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses said unto the congregation, the congregation uh, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. Now, think about this. What if Moses would have disregarded what God had commanded him to do? Would they have ever experienced the presence and the Shekinah glory of God? One deviation from God's commandment could have cost them the glory of God. Do we realize that in our life, amen, 
just a little bit of deviation from the Word of God, a little bit of neglect of not listening to the Spirit of God can cost us the Shekinah glory of God. God is looking for a sanctified people. Sanctify them wholly, the Word of God says. Amen. It is to be completely sanctified that we can see the glory of God. Amen. Just one single thing. Amen. One omission of God's Word could have kept them from the glory of God. Do you know in our life, if we're not careful, deviating from the Word of God, listening to someone else in their opinion, amen, struggling with the flesh and allowing the flesh to have its way over the, uh, the, the divine uh, morality of God's Word can cost us the glory of God's presence. God help us tonight. The hunger and thirst for righteousness. The manifestation of the glory of God was there because they sanctified themselves. They didn't reject the world. They didn't um, bear a type of spiritual infirmity or weakness. Let me ask you this. If you were to have a spiritual checkup tonight, if the great physician were to look at you, would he find that there's some spiritual infirmities and weaknesses in you? Most spiritual infirmities and weaknesses can cost you the glory. I'm talking about sanctification that is necessary for worship. And worship brings sanctification. Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. We are washed with the purity of the very Son of God, Jesus Christ. God has called us to be washed tonight so that we can be set apart for service and for worship. These priests, when they went into the tabernacle and they offered sacrifices, you know what that was? That was worship. Do you know that as they took care of the, the leaven bread that was service and worship. As the candlesticks were fueled and kept fueled, as the fire was never to go out and they maintained the fire, even when they packed up Brother Craig and they would travel, that fire had to be kept with them and it was not to go out. Sometimes we pack up from church and we go home. Does the fire go out? Do you rely on someone else to keep the fire stoked and fueled? Or are we the fire people that take the fire of God with us and we keep it burning? So that when we come back together, I'm telling you tonight, worship is a choice. Are you choosing to worship? I'm going to read this real quickly. I see time. I'm going to try to finish up the next five minutes so that you can have time to talk. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with a girdle and clothed him with a robe and put the ephod upon him and girded him with the purest girdle of the ephod and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also he put in the breastplate, the urine of the thumb, that's why they look for the direction of God. The year and the thumb, the words mean lights and perfection. We need to have something over our heart, and that is light and perfection. In our heart that can get dark, calloused and cold, we need to make sure the light of God's Word is shining. The light of the Holy Ghost is burning. Amen. That the light of Jesus Christ is in there. 
We need to make sure that as well perfection is in there in our hearts. It can only come through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and put the, the mitre upon its head, and upon the mitre, even upon the forefront, did the golden plate and, uh, and the holy crown. And, and, and on this, amen, on this, amen, was, was holiness unto the Lord. On our minds, on our minds, there should be one thing that is upon our mind and labeled our mind, and that is holiness unto the Lord. It's not thinking vile thoughts towards someone or about someone. It shouldn't be thinking about things that are not pleasing to God. It should not be thinking about things that 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 would not be done in the kingdom of God in heaven and not taken before the throne of God. Amen. Everything about our mind should be holiness unto the Lord. Our mind being kept holy is worship unto God. Our hearts being kept holy with perfection in life is worship unto God. I know that Jesus Christ is our priest. Amen. But as we are a royal priesthood, amen, we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need to be robed in the entire which God has given us. Amen. Protecting our heart and protecting our mind. Amen. As an act of worship unto God. Sanctification. I'm stopping there. Does anyone have anything they want to say? That's just